If you've been paying attention to the Warriors season so far, you know that rookie Trace Jackson Davis has started the year out of the team's regular rotation, despite clearly showing in the preseason that he should be the team's primary backup center, at the very least. Steve Kerr chose a less defensive route of going to a Dario Sarge and Jonathan Kuminga combo at power forward and center to begin the season. However, in the team's second game against the Kings, both Kevon Looney and Saric got into foul trouble, opening up an opportunity for TJD to show what he can do. Sit back and enjoy, because this young man is a walking positive, as you'll see soon enough. Bear in mind, the team had an 8 point lead when he entered. Watch here as Monk runs a pick and roll with Sabonis, TJD stays in front of Monk and then contests perfectly with verticality to thwart the Monk attack. Monk dishes to the corner for a Duarte 3 that misses, TJD immediately boxes out Sabonis, Kuminga does a nice job to help on the long rebound. This is what the Warriors need in terms of sound rebound positioning at all times. Meanwhile, look at TJD darting out in transition and creating massive separation for Sabonis. The energy he plays with is incredibly refreshing at the center position for the Warriors. Curry sees him leaking out and delivers the perfect pass, but TJD couldn't quite get a handle on the ball and it's a turnover. Watch Moody though as he somehow sneaks in between Murray and Sabonis for a sneaky steal. Nice. Warriors reset and go to a high pick and roll with Curry and TJD, but TJD has to do a better job of making full contact on the screen as this is closer to a slip. The lack of space created by the screen traps Curry too hard, not giving him any room for a pass, and it ends up being a turnover. TJD sees the action and immediately sprints down the floor. The instant recognition and the hustle is not something a stat sheet can ever tell you. This is the kind of intangible you can't really teach. You either have this or you don't, and TJD has it. As you can see, he catches up on a play he had no business catching up to on what should have been an easy 3 on 2 for the Kings. GP2 of course is back and contests a bonus at the rim amazingly, followed by TJD who is back in time to clean the glass. Way to hustle Mr. Steal of the Draft. Here TJD sees CP's man already screened, so he rolls and makes himself available. CP pulls up and notice how TJD has way better position than McGee, practically overwhelming him under the basket. TJD gets his left hand on the ball, but McGee's length helps him just enough to also poke at the ball, allowing Fox, who's standing behind TJD, to steal the rebound. The very fact that TJD consistently fights for rebounding every possession in this manner will help the Warriors big time long term. Watch here as TJD sprints down the court to position himself against McGee and to do his job as the team's anchor and in fact recovers enough to block this shot attempt by Duarte at the rim. Strangely, the Kings stat keepers did not credit him with a block here. Anyway, Kaminga is aware enough to realize the much bigger McGee is there for the rebound, so he uses his athleticism to jump to his apex to keep the ball away from the big man. But the ball ultimately goes to Murray and the Kings end up with the offensive rebound. Now watch, as the Warriors defense breaks down, both Kuminga and Moody fail to communicate and needlessly go out to Fox at the same time, leaving Monk wide open in the corner. Realizing this, TJD darts to the 3 point line to successfully deter Monk, who kinda gets spooked, fails to see a wide open McGee in the paint and resets to Fox. Incredible versatility from TJD right there. There's not another center on the Warriors outside of Draymond who could have played it any better. Kuminga sags down way too far but somehow covers ground for a great contest on Fox's 3 that misses way short. It's undisciplined and overly reliant on athleticism but that athleticism sometimes pays dividends like it did here. Simple pick and roll on this play, Monk lobs it up to McGee for a big finish. Watch TJD as he turns to the basket thinking Monk took a floater but quickly realizes it was a lob. He freaking blindly contests anyway, jumping while not even seeing what's coming at him and somehow finds McGee well enough to commit the foul. Wow. <laughs> McGee will now have to earn it from the free throw line as TJD continues to allow nothing easy. Here Clay comes around the curl, TJD rolls and is actually open but Clay takes a contested shot and hits. Monk uses McGee's screen here to penetrate. TJD once again gives Monk no daylight at the rim, forcing him to find the open man in the corner for the 3. But look at Moody here, as TJD has full control of Monk's drive, there's no need for Moody to sag off of his man this much, leaving a sharpshooter wide open in the corner. 
Moody must clean up some of his off-ball defensive stuff, communicate better, and understand personnel. TJD can be trusted enough to not give this much help on a guard's drive. CP does his best, and his contest is cute, but Murray basically doesn't even see him as he launches the three. Luckily it's a miss, TJD seals off McGee once again, allowing Moody to collect the rebound. If you like the content so far, hit up all the buttons and leave a comment below. TJD does a nice job of screening on this play as he makes clear contact with Monk to provide good space for CP. One thing I've noticed about him so far this season is that he has yet to pick up an illegal screen, a huge problem for the Warriors over the years. CP penetrates, pump fakes to freeze the defense before finding Moody for the 3. Beautiful shot creation. Monk denies the screen on this play and attacks Clay, who is too slow to keep up with speedy players at this point of his career. But TJD is right there, sliding his feet beautifully once again to give Monk no opportunities for easy looks at the rim. If this was Sarich, these are point blank layups every time. TJD has completely changed the complexion of the Warriors' interior defense in this game. Monk looks to the corner once again, but Moody reads his pass like a book and snatches it. Take a look at where TJD is compared to McGee when Moody initially got the steal. As you can see, McGee is ahead of him, but watch as TJD starts running like a deer in transition, beating everybody and leaving McGee in the dust. This allows the Warriors a quick 3 on 2 opportunity as the man that should stay on clay now has to drop down to cover TJD, forcing Monk, who is behind on the play, to try to catch up to clay. CP sees the opening, dishes to clay, who cans the transition 3. This doesn't happen without TJD, and he's really the only true center on the team, mobile enough to create opportunities like this. High screen for Fox on this play, but he rejects the screen and loses Kuminga with ease. But guess who stands in front of him? TJ freaking D. Fox does a quick in and out thinking he'd blow past the rookie, but TJD stays with him, contests, and bothers just enough to force a miss at the rim. Incredible! Going back to Kuminga after losing Fox, he hustles to get in front of McGee to box out and does just enough to tip the ball away from McGee on the rebound. And TJD ends up with the loose ball. These kinds of defensive stops truly puts a smile on my face. I don't know what Kerr and the coaching staff are on, but they are out of their minds for continuously having TJD out of the rotation at center in favor of a defensive zero in Saric. I like Saric as a stretch 4, but playing him at the 5 is coaching malpractice when you have someone as good as TJD being wasted on the bench as an 11th man. High pick and roll once again between CP and TJD, but the defender uses ice to force CP to go away from it. TJD rolls to the rim and is open for a lob, but CP doesn't see it while dribbling through the trees and elects to take a fadeaway jump shot that misses. Meanwhile, Kuminga is roaming, Fox pays no attention, TJD has position on Vizenko on the box out, McGee is contesting CP's shot, which frees up Kuminga diving to the rim for the monster putback. Buckets in the paint is vital for an efficient offense, and TJD's constant activity and pressure against the Kings has allowed the Warriors to score in bunches naturally despite Curry not being on the floor. Here's the first offensive screw up since TJD entered the game, as he was switched to Vizankov on the offensive end and looked to stay on him on this play. But nobody else picked up on this fact. There's literally three Warriors players who are completely sleeping on McGee, and the center converts on his easiest bucket of the night. Iso play for Moody here as he takes a quick step back, pump fakes, then leans in to hit a tough three. So let me stop for a second and give you a quick summary of what you've seen so far. The score was 83 to 75 Warriors when TJD first came into the game with a little less than 5 minutes left in the third quarter. Warriors scored 14 points in the span of 4 minutes, which is very good. But what truly stands out is the fact that the Kings have scored just 4 points in that same span. With TJD on the floor, the Warriors have ballooned their lead to 18 points turning this once tight contest into a borderline blowout. Through 10 defensive possessions, the Warriors allowed one field goal and a free throw apiece on two separate fouls. This is what you call shutdown defense. And this is how great teams create separation by stringing together multiple stops by being on a string defensively with a reliable anchor shutting it all down. 
Trace Jackson Davis just helped the Warriors play one of their most dominant defensive quarters of the season. And it didn't involve Draymond, Wiggins, Looney, or GP2. Think how scary this defense will look when you start mixing some of those names in with TJD. I haven't seen the Warriors look this good defensively since the 2021-2022 season. And it's all thanks to a single rookie who was the 57th overall pick in the draft. Meanwhile, Steve Kerr continues to keep him out of the Warriors rotation despite the team falling to 14th in defensive rating. Again, either Kerr and his coaching staff are out of their minds or they're too scared to step on toes in favor of a rookie who should be getting at least 20 minutes per game, bare minimum. With the defensive issues the team is having right now due to Kerr's obsession with running small to tiny lineups, not playing TJD who is a walking positive should be considered internal sabotage. By the way, TJD played just under 5 minutes of this game and only one rebound to show for all of his efforts in the stat sheet. This just goes to show the stat sheet will never tell you the full story and sometimes even half the story. Here's the bottom line. Trace Jackson Davis is the best center the Warriors have drafted in the last 10 years and easily their most valuable draft pick since Draymond. Yes, he is far better than Looney as a rookie when he was drafted back in 2015 and you could even make the case for him to supplant Looney in the starting lineup if not this year, then certainly by next year. Yes, he is that good. The Warriors are all in on gunning for a championship this year, and the sooner they allow TJT to get valuable minutes in the regular season, the more ready he will be by the playoffs. Make no mistake, this young man will play a much bigger role in the playoffs than Kuminga or Moody as he is nearly three years older than these lottery picks and already looks more polished all around than either of them. We'll see how long it takes for the coaching staff to permanently insert him into the rotation, but for the team's sake, it needs to be sooner than later, and by sooner, I mean right away. I hope this video brought value to you in some way, and if it did, be sure to like and subscribe as I will provide this type of content on a weekly basis moving forward. Thank you for watching. Until next time.